Hi, in this video tutorial, we shall learn about Product Master in Exenda ERP. So let's get started. So let's navigate to the Inventory module and inside Inventory module, you can see Common Forms and below Common Forms you can see Master. Below Masters you can see uh, products, product prices, uh, serial numbers, lot numbers, product barcodes, serialized products. Below to that you can see product categorization. So let's talk about product categorization. Product categorization means like you know uh, it, it is the if the product is associated to different different categories uh, like uh, product department, division, category, subcategory, ordering group, counting group, product brand, so on and so forth. So you can associate this uh, different uh, dimensions to product and accordingly system uh, in the system you can make a complete hierarchy. So for example if you want to create a new brand so you can click on the product brand in here and you can see is a list of uh, uh, product brands is uh, appearing and if you want to create a new one you can simply click on create and you can put the name of the brand let's say let's call it new brand and just save it and uh, the brand uh, new brand uh, is uh, is saved and if you want to further see what all product belongs to this brand you can simply click on products and it will display all the products which is related to this brand if you click on for example this particular brand and you click on products as you can see on the screen these are all the products associated to this brand similarly you have a product uh, linked product category you have product departments you can create department like for example in the screen you can see we have created apparel and shoes so these are two departments created in Exenta. okay if you click on this apparel and again if you want to see what all product associated to apparel uh, department so you can simply click and it will display you all the products which is associated with this particular department Similarly, you have division, category, subcategory, so on and so forth. So let's move on to the product master. As you can see under common forms, masters and products. You can see list of products uh, appearing on the screen. This is a Kanban view. This products will be listed along with an image. If you have associated an image of, uh, of a product, it can be visible on this screen as well this is called a kanban view if you want to switch it to a list view uh, there is a small icon on the top right and if you click on and you can see list if i click on list it will give you a list view of your, all your products if you want to filter a particular product let's say uh, let's say if you want to search a product uh, barcode is one two three four five six so I click on one, two, three, four, five, six, and I click search barcode for so and so. So I click and that particular barcode is filtered out. If I want to see the details of this product, I can simply click on this item and it will get me the full details about the product. Let's say if I want to go back to the list again. So on the top, I can click on products and uh, this is a breadcrumb. I click in here and I'm back on the list. I want to remove the filter. I just click on this small icon and the filter is removed. There are some predefined filters also. If I click on this small icon, you can see on the screen advanced search. So if I click on here and you can see these are the quick filters available. Now let us say if I want to remove this product, so it will get me all the products along with consumable service products, so on and so forth. For example, I want to filter only the service products. I click on service. So this is getting me all the products which are of type service. So these are all service products. If I remove this filter, then everything is visible. On in below, for example, if I click on service products, so on below you can see that 19 products are filtered out. 
so you can see on the total how many numbers are there uh, that will also help you so let's remove now for example if i want to see those products which can be sold right so if i click on here it will get me all the products which can be sold for example if i want to filter out on the items which i have archived archived means disabled no more available in the business but for some reason i want to see which all items are archived because by default an archived item will not be available in the list so i have to search it explicitly so if i click on archive so see this is an item which is archived you can see here this product details and here in the red you can see this if a, if a product is archived it will be marked as uh, in the red color archived if i want to restore this item if i want to activate it back so i can just click on restore and it will be back to the product list so like that i can uh, the, there are some other uh, filters available i can make use of for example i want to see the products which are available exhausted uh, exhausted stock negative stock so on and so forth so i can use it similarly there is a group grouping option so if i click on grouping so for example if i want to group the products by brand so i can simply click on brand and this are the this is the grouping by brand so you can see four smart this is a brand and it is showing that three products belong to this brand so if i click on this small icon it will expand and you can see these are the three products i can uh, collapse it also now for example al cartel this is a brand if i click in it will get me the products which belongs to this brand similarly if i want to uh, let us say group it by product category so i can click on product category these are the categories and uh, these are the products which is inside that particular category so i can use uh, any field to group the product as well uh, there are there are favorites option also for example certain uh, criteria of filter you want to make your own filter so you can always put for example uh, let's say some item uh, let's say air port okay this is a product you want to uh, along with this some other uh, filters also you can apply and let us say you want to keep searching this on a daily basis this particular filter you want to save it so you can save this filter as let's say uh, air port products let's say air port product and if i want to share this filter with all the users i can use share with all users in a save so what will happen now let's say uh, next time when you uh, come to this product master and if you want to see the products of airports you don't need to put any filters and all you just get go to the favorites and just click in here and it will get you all the products with uh, with airport right so another thing is like uh, this are you can see uh, these are the uh, uh, quick searches available like product model category variant uh, price list location so on and so forth what you see on the screen apart from that if you want to filter on let's say a particular uh, field let's say product second name you want to filter on product second name so in the list on the uh, right hand side uh, you can see this is the filters these are the default uh, filters below that there is a add, add custom filter option so these are all the list what you see on the screen available and for example i want to uh, filter on a particular uh, field let's say country or product second name or whatsoever or a division or a expiration date or so on and so forth so for example country so i can choose here country which contains like india so if i select like this it will get me the products which belongs to india automatically so you can use this add custom filter option and you can filter on uh, the products uh, which are not available into this quick filters let's create a new product so to create a new product there is a create button click on create button to create a new product you just need to give a name of a product that's enough to create new product let's give a name let's let's say test new product and i just say for example uh, you can put your bar uh, product code and barcode and if you leave this fields blank 
system will generate the code automatically so let's see now you can see system has created the product code automatically and the product test new product has been created this is a way to create a product there's another way also let's uh, for, we will delete this product for now and we will see now for example let's take this item 3d silicone case and i want to create this pro another product a new product but that the properties of that product which i am going to create as a new product is similar to this item so in the system you have an option to duplicate so what i'll do is i'll so you you can see this product there is a product code of this item 4760 i just duplicate this if i the soon i click on duplicate system will create a copy of this product as you can see and it generated a new number item code product code for this num, uh, for this item so i can rename this item to whatever i want and i can simply uh, save so this way also you can quickly add products so duplicate will do what it will rest of the properties like for example uh, you will have like brand gender so many uh, properties you might have uh, 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 you know you have associated to this product so if you duplicate those properties will be duplicate uh, duplicated as well so it is easier to duplicate a product and create new products like that at the same time if you want to change some other details like you know name of the product the second name uh, for example if you want to change the barcode if you want to change some other properties you can always do uh, at, at a later stage as well then i can simply click on save and the new product has been created and saved successfully now let's move back and let's go to a product Let, let's understand the details of the products so let's choose an item and let's understand what all properties are there so uh, you can see on the top uh, this is the name of the product and uh, uh, you can uh, you can set if this item is related to a device repair module uh, item and it's a service product so you can click uh, you can take this if it is a device repair consumable product you can uh, mark it if it is if this item can be sold so you choose that this item can be sold so once you mark it uh, as uh, this item can be sold then only it will be appearing in the list while making a uh, sale otherwise if it is not marked as sold i mean can be sold then it will not be appearing in the sales list similarly purchase there might be certain items like service items which you will purchase but you will not sell or vice versa so you can use this uh, properties to to enable selling and disable selling of this product similarly inside general information you can see product type which is you can see here stockable consumable and service so let's understand what is stockable uh, consumable and service stockable product system will uh, will maintain the stock on hand for this particular product if you mark this product as consumable then system will not maintain the on hand however it will have the stock movement for this product you can see the stock movement however it will not maintain on hand if it is a service product in that case it will neither uh, maintain stock on hand nor movement of this product by default uh, you create a product it is the default is stockable product if you want to change then you can always change category so category this is an internal category we call it as product group also which is by default uh, we have one setup called all we keep generic this uh, setup as all this category is basically uh, used for uh, accounting and for the costing purpose the setup is available if you uh, drill down on this category this is the setup of that category 
and you can see we have set it as an average posting method inventory evaluation is automated and these are the accounting setup we have done uh, uh, for this particular category so usually uh, we do not use this uh, internal category for the categorization purpose unless required and mostly you, uh, in all the implementation we use uh, this one category only which is called all and this is the product code like for example if you if you have a number a product code or a item code you call it whatsoever so if you have a number or a code you can put it or if you leave this will blank while creating system will pick the number automatically similarly if you have barcode you can put the barcode second name uh, for example this is mostly used uh, while printing the receipt for example uh, if you if you want to keep arabic name of this product so you can put that arabic name here in product second name and when you print the receipt you can find that second name which you can put in whatever language for example it can be arabic it can be hindi or uh, so on and so forth so it can be uh, visible or it will be appearing in your receipt this is the sales price so this is the base sales price so you put the base sales price of the product in here auto report has finished this is a, a separate chapter we will be talking into a different session altogether supplier you can associate a product with a supplier this is a default supplier and you uh, if you have uh, if you if you have associated products with suppliers what will happen in the reporting or on, when, while checking on hand sales report or so on and so forth so, so those reports you can see the reports by supplier for example if you want to see the sales by supplier so you can uh, you can be able to do that mostly this uh, option is used for consignment businesses as well for example if you are buying uh, items on consignment basis right so in that case you can uh, associate product with the supplier and you can also generate sales report by supplier on a monthly basis or whatever on a periodic basis uh, like that cost system will calculate the cost like for example the default setup which is the category all which i just showed so the setup is average costing method by default we use average costing method and cost is calculated automatically as you can see this field is disabled why since the system will calculate the cost of the product automatically so it doesn't let you change the cost directly so this cost will get generated automatically last purchase price this is the price uh, if you post a purchase order so whichever last purchase order you have posted and whatever was the uh, price of that purchase purchase will be listed down here along with the last purchase date unit of measure unit of measure you can specify pieces uh, cartons uh, you can have dozens these are the list of um, un un unit of measures you can see on the screen you can create a uh, unit of measures also so unit of measure this unit of measure what you see this is the base unit of measure base unit of measure means now your inventory for this particular product will be maintained in pieces if you choose dozens then it will system will maintain the inventory in dozen similarly you have purchase unit of measure purchase unit of measure if you specify for example this product 3d silicon you want to maintain the stock of this product in pieces however when you are making a purchase you always purchase this into carton so you can specify carton what will happen while making a purchase order and you select this product automatically system will suggest to purchase this item into carton so this is the uh, setup in, in this is the general information uh, options which is available let's uh, explore the options available under purchase tab so uh, you can see in the purchase tab basically 
you can see these are the vendors uh, we have associated to this particular product so a product now as you see on the top we have specified here a vendor this is a default vendor basically however you can have multiple vendors for one product so in that case you can set multiple vendors into the vendors list uh, inside purchase so uh, what it what it does is basically if you have specified multiple vendors and you have specified their prices so while making a purchase order automatically system would pick that price for that particular supplier for that product you can also specify the name of the product and the code of the product which is specific to that particular vendor so while making a purchase order system would print the name and the code of the product which is specific to that supplier so that you know supplier can understand his product name and the, the code you can have in system we can have our own code and own name other than the vendor so that is also possible you can set the price in here if the supplier is asking you to provide a minimum quantity for the product you can you can specify that minimum quantity and while making a purchase order system would suggest that you have to buy minimum this much quantity of product from this supplier you can also put a validity so for example your supplier is giving you a special price for a certain period of time so you can specify that validity in here and while making a purchase order uh, which is falling under that validity time system will pick that price automatically you can specify the lead time also here you can create for one vendor you can create multiple records so by 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 that validity time system will pick the prices automatically so this is what uh, available in the purchase tab then we will move on to the inventory tab so in the inventory tab you can see you can specify the weight of the product volume who's responsible the user you can specify that uh, who's responsibility uh, for this product uh, what is the lead time for manufacturing if you have if you manufacture this product you can specify the manufacturing lead time uh, customer lead time if you are delivering it to the customer so how long it will take for the delivery to the customer you can specify that lead time routes this is a advanced uh, concept we will cover it into in a different video uh, traceability so this is a very important option uh, by default it is not tracking but you can mark this product for example if it's an electronic product and it carries serial number so you can use by unique serial number so what the system will do for this product it will track the serial number so every product every item every unit of the product it will have a serial number uh, at, associated with the stock movement so you can mend, you can see which serial number is bought and which serial number is sold like that you can maintain the inventory and you can track the serial numbers as well similarly by lot so if it is by lot if you set it then system will uh, here suggest like the lot is basically batch number or lot number you can say if you have uh, food products and if you want to track the expiry of the product so you can use by lots and here you can uh, specify that what is the uh, use time lifetime remo removable time alert time so you can or, or you can set the uh, days you can specify the days and while making the lot of this product system will automatically calculate the expiry of that particular load so that will make it very easier so for now i'll set it to no tracking uh, then you have invoicing options uh, invoicing options for example if uh, uh, you want to specify uh, taxes so uh, let's say if you have a sales tax of like weight 10 percent so you can specify if you want to uh, uh, if you want to let's say change the default uh, accounting setup 
for this particular item only and rather than you want it to hit to sales account you want to hit it to a different uh, income account while making a sales so you can choose that account as well similarly on the uh, other hand payables if you purchase this item what would be the tax or vat so you can see a vat setup over here so you can choose a vat which will be applicable while purchasing if uh, an expense account also uh, you can associate if it is an asset item if you create it as an asset item then you can uh, you can associate with a type like computers or furniture and so on and so forth and this is uh, some accounting setup we will cover it into a different uh, uh, video altogether so you can uh, set this invoicing policy here then you have uh, let's say notes so inside notes you can put different different notes for, uh, related to this product so how it will it will help uh, for example on the point of sale application if you put note over here so it, it, note is nothing it's a complete description about the product so it can be visible to your sales people on the floor so they can easily see a uh, description about the product and they can convey that uh, uh, description to the customers as well so you can uh, set different different descriptions in here barcodes let us say this particular product you have different unit of measures and you have different barcodes so one product you have multiple barcodes for multiple units so inside this tab you can keep adding those barcodes so let's say if this item has a barcode let's say uh, this you can also for this particular barcode if you want to give a different description then you can put a description as well and that description will be visible on the receipt of uh, which is coming out in the pos or in the sales as well so you can specify that description if this barcode the unit is let's say dozen so the soon you scan this barcode and you want uh, the default um of this barcode is dozen so you can specify here dozen or piece or whatsoever like that you can have multiple uh, barcodes you can put it down and you can associate it with two or different unit of measure or the same unit of measure as the base unit and you can also put the description as well I'll just remove it for now. Barcodes, linked product concept. We will have a different video for that. Retail setup. So in the retail setup, this is very important setup, and most of these options are related to the point of sale application. So let us see uh, what is allow zero price. If you set allow zero price by default, any item with sales price zero. system will not accept pos it will reject unless you have ticked this option key in price there may be certain price which do not have fixed uh, sales price and you want uh, the cashiers to put price at the time of sales so if you tick this and you scan this particular product on the point of sale prompt point of sale will prompt you to enter the price of that product similarly the quantity the same concept of price uh, quantity there may be certain items like weighing items uh, so kind of so system will prompt you to put the quantity of that product as soon as you scan must key in serial if your this product is a serial product serial number if you want to maintain the serial number of this product so you uh, here you can choose this option must be in serial so what system will do as soon as you scan this product it will prompt you for entering the serial number of this product uh second price uh if you have this product uh second price if you specify so you know you can uh, your salesman uh, they they can see the product description on the pos and uh, Uh, they can decide and they can see that this is second price is a last price for example if you can offer to your customer so if you specify then your salesman they can offer this as a last price to the customer substitute 
is substitute this is a concept uh, mainly used for uh, groceries and supermarket wherein you know when you scan a product you might not find that product available and you have long queues to avoid queues you can create a product a substitute products you can keep created in the system and as soon as you scan a barcode which is not available in the system then system would prompt you to choose an alternate product uh, of uh, which is similar to the product you have scanned so if you mark this as a substitute product pos uh, will suggest to choose out of that list you can choose one product and you can continue the transaction must key in comment must key in comment is uh, if you enable this checkbox system will uh, uh, ask you to enter the comment of the product prompt lots if you have batch numbers or lots uh, enabled and you want uh, the the cashier to choose at the time of sales which lot number he has sold then you can enable this option block at register for example you want this product to be blocked only from the point of sale counter then you can choose this block at register and this product you cannot make sales similarly if you have product model number color of the product you can specify the size of the product the gender the season the brand of the product you can specify it in you know, here if, which brand this product belongs to uh, department uh, we we already went through all this dimension all this uh, in the product categorization part so this are here this, this is where you can specify the department category division sub category ordering group counting group uh, uh, country so you can specify all these options what these are not mandatory fields whatever uh, options you want to choose for example in your business you don't want to maintain department and division so you can leave this fields blank and that's it if you want to only choose category then you can simply choose category and you can save the product and that is uh, more than enough so these are the categorization ordering group and counting group these are two important groups which is mainly used for ordering and for the counting let us say if you do periodic counting in your stores and to simplify that counting you want to create certain sort of groups so you can create those groups and you can associate uh, those product to this group then system would facilitate the counting process by that particular group so easily uh, within that grouping uh, from the grouping itself your uh, your operators can do counting they can print the counting sheet by that group they can put the counting and the counts and they can uh, put those counts into the system as per that group itself and uh, save and they can process similarly ordering so uh, like you know if your the store wants to place sort of orders so they can use this ordering group that makes it easier for example they want to order uh, certain products which belongs to certain group so they can just choose the group and uh, under that group what all products are there it will be listed down and they can simply place the order similarly if a country you can associate a product with a country and you can then see it in the sales reports or inventory report if you want to see the inventory report uh, by country you can see that as well and sales as well uh, then you have pos category uh, this we will be covering in a, a different session uh, then you have uh, is coupon is loyalty if this uh, product is a coupon product we can simply mark it as a coupon if it is a loyalty product we can simply mark it as a loyalty uh then you have warranty for example if you offer warranty for this product then you can specify that warranty in two months so for example if it's like 12 months warranty you can specify 12 and who is the warrantor maybe you are not the warrantor of this product and somebody some other company is warrantor so you can specify the name of the company who is providing warranty for this product so this is the retail setup then we will move on to product um product um so this is a product uh, you deal in multiple um so 
so you can sell this pro product into piece into carton into dozen right so you can keep adding those number of uoms here so if you want to add this you deal it in carton as well so you choose carton 125 which is the uh, in inside the carton 125 you will have 125 units right so you have piece also you have dozen also you can deal with this three unit for this product however the stock will be maintained in piece so if you see the on hand uh, report for this particular product you will be seeing that product into the, the quantity you will be seeing into piece no matter you have sold or purchased into carton or dozens or whatsoever all right now sales price so a product can have multiple prices so the one which we have specified on the top this is the base price base sales price and apart from that you can have multiple prices of a product you can have a price uh, specific to carton 125 a different price you can sell dozen into a different price than the one which is piece so for example you are selling one piece of this product at let's say five but you want to sell carton 125 at let's say 2500 kd right so you can specify that particular product the unit of measure and the price similarly if you want uh, this price to be applicable for a particular customer you can choose that customer and you can give him this special price you can also put a start date and end date and accordingly system will pick the price when you make an order or if you make a transaction in the point of sale accordingly you can also choose price list for example if you have wholesale price list retail price list you have franchisee sales you have some other channel of sales so for that you can create price list and you can associate that price list to a price for that particular product and accordingly system will pick the price while making the sales you can also see the sales prices for all the products together from product prices menu here it has listed down all the products with the details like start date in date warehouse price list so you can see all the products for all the all the prices for all the products in here if you want to create a new price for a product you can simply click create you can choose a product and you can specify the price starting from a date you can put an end date end date is not a mandatory field you can choose for which warehouse the price is applicable or price list or for a particular partner unit of measure unit of measure is a compulsory field you have to choose and then you can apply a price you have the lot wise feature also so for a particular lot number you want to keep a separate sales price that is also possible now let's talk about serialized products serialized products basically if you have electronics business and you want to keep your serial numbers for the electronics items like television or mobile numbers or any other electronics devices there you require to maintain serial numbers so on screen you can see two options the first is lots serial numbers and the other option is serialized products i'll will i'll be taking you through the serialized products but to classify these two options the first option what you see lots serial numbers this 
using this option you can maintain the inventory by serial numbers however the other option is pretty simple here system will not maintain the inventory by serial number however for the tracking purposes for example when you make a sales for an electronic items and if you want to uh, print it on your invoices and if that customer comes back to you for the return to ensure that that return what he has come back with is the same serialized product which you sold him to that extent this is helpful so let's get into it serialized products so this is the list of products with the serial number this serial number column this is the serial number the description and the product associated so on the screen you can see couple of products and the serial number so let us understand if you want to create a new uh, serial number simply click on create and you put the serial number the product associated to that serial number and you can also put the description now this description is really helpful in case you want to give a different a uh, name along with the name you want to give some description now let's take an example of this serial number which we have given a description as well so i'll just click on here so you can see that this is the serial number this is the product and this is the description we have given now in this description what we have given is the product name uae nova 75g blah 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 along with that we have also mentioned that who is the warrantor so the warrantor name also we have uh, added into the description along with the name of the product so what will happen in the pos when you will make a sales transaction instead it, it gives you this name in the receipt it will give you this description so the invoice will be printed with this description for the customer you can use excel to import products in exenta on a screen you see an excel format this excel format you can download it from descriptions as well so on the screen you see an id column now let's understand what is this id column so we'll move it to faq sheet which is available in this excel sheet and you can see here basically this id is a unique identifier column you can set any value you can uh, you can put any id you can associate a product with so if an id is set to every line you can re-import the same file several times and Exenta will update records instead of creating new ones if the ID already exists. So basically, if you apply ID along with the product information, then you can use that this same file to update the record of that product. You can leave this column blank also if you don't understand the concept, leave it blank and you can import and system will create the new record product code the code of the product you can put barcode product model name of the product the one the red highlighted columns are mandatory columns and must be specified else system will give an exception unit of measure purchase unit of measure now this is an alternate unit of measure for example ash baby apparel this product you sell it in piece also and you also deal in carton so you can specify the alternate unit of measure as well otherwise you can leave this column blank product type whether it's a stockable product consumable service so on then you have sales price 
this is the base sales price you can specify the base sales price of this product here cost price you can leave the cost price column and uh, once the product is created and when you make a purchase order or if you import the stock uh, master at that time system will compute the cost and it will update it automatically so you can leave this column blank or if you want to give a cost you can give it to description of the product you can specify the description of the product here and accordingly it will be updated then you have this categorization column which we discussed in the beginning of this video this is department division category sub category brand so this columns uh, this values you need to ensure that firstly it is created in the masters in the respective master so for example if you are importing department or division then this shoes it must exist in the uh, department master table otherwise system will throw you an exception then you have color you can if you, if your item has color you can put color size the default vendor you can also put the vendor and what is the vendor price you can specify like this you can prepare the item master in the excel form now let us say that apart from this fields this columns you want to also add some more uh, field to this sheet so what you can do is for example if you want to import a particular uh, a particular information let's say from this retail tab you want to also import season so what what can be done is you can copy this season column here and you can simply add anywhere not necessary to here add it here anywhere in the sheet you can add it and you just paste that season column in here and you can put the season values like that if you want to add multiple columns from the product master so you can add those columns here and system will import the values accordingly now i'll just save this file and now we will see how to import the file in exenta now to import the products we will go to inventory module common forms master and we'll go to the product master and below you can see import button we will load the file so this is the file exenta product master import uh, format i'll choose it and you can see on the screen uh, the data is loaded so it has automatically mapped with the here you can see that this uh, are the fields where uh, the excel file has been mapped so now next step is to test import we click on test import and you see this it has given an error i have purposely kept this error for me to explain you what this uh, message is how you can read so as you can see there are two errors found the first error uh, both the errors are basically duplicate barcode error you can see here duplicate key value violates unique constraint so there is a constraint of barcode so basically this barcode if you will see both this uh, barcodes like uh, 00011 and 0022 it already exists so if we go to the product master and if you filter it on the barcode you can see this product is it this barcode already existing right so what we'll do is we will go to the excel file for now and we will just remove the barcode in your case when you this is just an example i am giving you but in your case probably you need to identify why there is duplicate barcodes and probably either you can change or you can remove for now we will remove and we will save the file and we will go back and try to import again so import load file select the file and again the test import 
let's try all right now there is another error as well no matching record found for name baby one in field division so basically in our excel file we have division column wherein we have specified baby one this is actually i purposely made it baby one so you can see here the division and you can see the value is baby one what i'll do is i will remove this is to show you that if this record baby one is not existing in the master so system will not accept so what i'll do is i will remove the baby one and i just keep baby right and i just save the file and i go back and again i cancel and click the import load file and i choose the file and i click test import now it should be all okay now once everything is okay it will give you a message everything seems valid then what you can do is you can simply click on import and you're done so your import is successful now let's see what we had imported so this is the product code which we had imported we will we'll simply copy it and we will see we'll search that product code and here is the product available okay so all the information which we had uploaded is available along with the cost and everything right now one more thing uh, to notice that this is a secondary unit of measure we had imported this is just to uh, explain you it is getting updated here as you can see pieces one and dozens so this dozens is it it came from this particular column like products you can also import barcodes of the products in bulk using an excel sheet in exenta on a screen you see the excel format to import barcodes of the products in exenta let's discuss uh, the columns of the format so first column is an id column leave it blank this field is not required to have any value the second is the product here you need to input the product code then the barcode of the product which you want to create description of the product you can leave it blank lot number and the unit of measure you need to make sure that unit of measure column is case sensitive the product column is case sensitive too so you need to ensure that you provide the right product code and the unit of measure which is available in the system with the same name and you need to also avoid and make sure that there is no duplicate barcodes in the sheet else system will throw an exception while import now once you have prepared the excel format then you can use the backend system you can go to masters product barcodes and there is an import option available you simply click on import choose the file in this case we will choose exenta product barcodes import and the data preview would be visible on the screen first you need to do a test import if there is any issues with the file duplicate or if unit of measure does not match with the system it will give you messages and you can further correct it in the excel sheet and you can retry test import once everything is okay system would give you everything valid this message will come it means you can move to import so just click import and your import is done now let's look at how to import product serial numbers in exenta using an excel sheet so on the screen you can see 
an Excel format to import serial numbers in Exenta. First column is ID, you can leave it blank. The second column is the product. So here you have to put the product code. Make sure that you put the right product code and the serial number which you want to import. If you want to give description of the serial number, then you can do so. Once you are prepared with the file, then you can go to the backend, you go to the masters and serialized products, click import, load file and select the file. So Exenta product serials import format, I will select, it will give me a preview, test import everything seems valid if there is any problem with the product code then system would give you an error message accordingly once everything is okay click import once you click import you can see on the screen the serial numbers are imported exenda gives you export option throughout the system Let's learn how to export product master data to Excel. So we will navigate to the product master. We'll switch to list view. And now, for example, I want to filter some data and then export. So I can use the filters, uh, various filters, default filter, filters are there. Apart from that, for example, I want to filter by brand for smart and I filtered and this many products I want to export so what I'll do is I'll click on select all and I click on export the wizard will appear by default uh, uh, some options are there it will export all data and it will be exported to an excel file these are the fields to export which is already selected based on the list view uh, you were on and on the left hand side these are the fields which is a product master fields so this is all the fields available now for example I want to also export color I may want to export let's say uh, cost price uh, I may want to export the description so I can keep selecting whatever information available on the product master uh, you want to export so I can select probably you don't want product model so you can choose product model and you can remove it from the export list similarly I don't want internal category I can select and I can remove it similarly I don't want product type I can remove so like that you can uh, whatever information which is there on the product master you can select and you can add it at the same time maybe now this view probably you would require for future use also so what you can do is you can save it with a name let's say export I can give one you can give a relevant relevant name for now I give my export and I save it so now this my export I've saved and later when I want to export this field I can simply choose and those fields will be selected. Now I click export and the data is downloaded into an excel format. I can click and I can open. So here on the screen you see the exported data. It often requires to update the product master for keeping it properly maintained. Let's see how we can update the masters in bulk using Excel. So we are on the product master and we will switch it to list view. Now for this demo, I want to update the products with uh, name for smart. So these are the products which I am going to update. You can use your own criteria and you can apply so so for now i will select this all products which i want to update and i will export it to the excel file 
for updating the products we need to use import compatible export so i'll switch it to this uh, particular mode and then i will export those fields which i am i want to update now for example there are a lot of fields which is uh, which has come from the list view however i would i want i don't want to update product barcode so i'll remove it i don't want to update internal category we will remove it so that the file the ex export file do not become bulky and uh, it is less in in weight and easier to download so keep those information which you want to update that is better now probably i want to update some other fields as well like i want to update let us say the color so i'll choose color i probably want to update uh, let's say some other whatever information i want to update i can select it from the list over here and i can put it on the export list so let's say some other information like uh, season or size or second price let's take second price or you can also take like category sub category brand also if you probably want to update or whatever information uh, possible you can update using this now there are certain informations on the product master for example cost uh, unit of measure this information cannot be updated so better don't try to update it else uh, it will give you error message so i have selected all this information which i want to update and i will export it you can for example it also happens that you would require to keep updating such information at a later stage also so you can also save it as a list uh, and you can reuse them at a later time as well so now let's export it i have exported and i'll i'll open that file so this is the excel file open um now i will update the product model for example i want to change the product model to let's say uh, this number i want this number to be this i want to change the sales price list price so i'll change it to 5 5.6 i want to put color i'll put color white black I want to also give second price to this product. I want to also change the sub category or whatever information you want to change. You can change it. Keep a note that this ID column should remain as is. You should not change this ID column. Neither remove it or edit this or keep it blank. This is the internal identification column based on which system would identify. that which records needs to be updated in the system so like this you can update your excel file save it also also remember another thing do not keep formulas for example if using the sheet you uh, give some formulas then it should be plain uh, data and no formulas or no formatting should be there in order to uh, update the uh, the data in the system so once you are done you can save it and then go back to the system now you see these are the items which we are going to update so i'll click on import from the product master list view and then load file and this is the file basically which we have updated so i will select the file and those preview that file would be on the screen I can use test import. Everything seems valid. And I just click on import. So now you can see on the screen that uh, four smart products have got updated. You can see the product models got uh, got updated. The sales price is also got updated. If you click any of the product and you go to the retail setup, as and you can see that second price which we have updated, product model, the color. everything is got updated so this is how you can update your uh, product master data in bulk using 
Excel format. Similar to importing products, barcodes, serials, you can also import vendor prices and also update the prices later at any time. Let's see how to import new vendor product prices in Exenta. So for this demo, I will select a few products with four smart. So these are three products and I'll switch to this view and we'll see for this three products what I have selected, there is no vendor prices available. So we will import the vendor prices for this products. So this is on the screen you see the format to import uh, supplier prices. So the first column is an ID column which is not required in this case because we are importing new product prices. Sequence you can leave it as zero. Vendor. The name of the vendor in Exenta. The vendor name has to be the same as in Exenta and it is a case sensitive uh, name. Product template. Product template is basically the code of the product. Minimal quantity. So for example, if this price you apply, which is for a certain quantity, then you can do so. For example, if your supplier is giving you special price if you buy certain amount of quantity then you can put that quantity and the price you get against that quantity system will automatically pick the quantity uh, the price based upon the purchase order quantity so in that case you can also have multiple lines for the same product same supplier with the different quantities the start date is the date uh from which the price is applicable if you leave this blank then this price will be applicable for this uh, uh, product forever if you specify a date system would if while making a purchase of order whatever date you have specified it will validate against this start date and end date, and accordingly it would pick the price so here we have prepared the file and now we will in, we'll see how to import it so from the back end you will go to inventory masters and you can see vendor product prices so i'll click on here so on the screen you can see all the vendor prices currently you have in the system so it is all this is the vendor this is the product minimal quantity price started ended and so on and so forth so to import i'll click on import i'll load the file i'll select the file exenta product supplier prices i'll double click so on the screen you can see a preview i'll do a test import everything seems valid if there is any error for example if the vendor name is incorrect or not matching with the system it will keep it would give you the messages accordingly so now i will click on import now the prices are imported to make sure the prices are imported in the system we can see like for example for smart i will filter on the product for smart so you see these are the three products which we have imported at ABC supplier. You can also re-update the prices, product vendor prices which is there already in Xcenter. So for this example, I have filtered out on four smart products for which I want to update the prices. I can update the price or I can update the minimal quantity started in it, so on and so forth. So what we need to do is to export the items. You can use your own criteria to export. For this example, I am exporting only this three lines. So we will click on export and we will make sure that we choose import compatible export and we export it to Excel. So click on export to file. So this will this records are exported to a file. So on the screen, you can see the exported file the first field now is the id field now this id field is very important to update this record the prices on the same record this id is required so do not uh, do not modify or remove this column keep it intact now for example anything i want to change for example if i want to change the sequence 
and I want to also change the price to let's say 50, 51, and 52. I can put also the start date or end date. Whatever uh, changes I want to make, I can do so. Now, for example, I don't want to change this name and uh, this template ID. This is not required to up to get updated. So I can either remove it from the Excel itself or I can leave it as is and I just save it. So my file name is uh, so whatever you need to see which where you have saved the file and then you go to the import in the backend once again. Load the file and this time I will uh, see the file is product supplier one. So this is the preview it gives me. Make sure that you do not import the uh, vendor name and the template because we are not modifying this field. So whichever fields you are modifying, that fields only you select. I, you can remove it from the Excel uh, columns also or you can remove it once you are on this screen. So what will happen? What system? System will not uh, include this fields for updation. So whatever fields you want to update, that many fields you leave it and the other one you remove it uh, for the updation. So once you have done this, then you can do test import. Everything seems valid and click import. So now you can see that the prices are updated accordingly. So you can see for four smart products, if you see on the screen, prices 50, 51 and 52.